In this video, we're going to review colligative properties of electrolyte solutions. All right, remember that electrolyte solutions are those that are made by substances that, when put in solution, can generate uh, ions that can conduct electricity. So that's why they are called electrolyte. Okay, so uh, a very simple um, electrolyte solution would be, for example, sodium chloride uh, dissolved in water. Okay, when you put that in water or another polar solvent, this dissociates into ions, which are the electrolytes. Okay, Cl minus aqueous. All right, so what we try to do in this video then is try to uh, capture uh, how colligative properties of the solutions can be framed. Uh, our starting uh, step is going to be uh, just equations for uh, colligative properties of non electrolyte solutions things like uh, ethanol or methanol or glucose and so forth. Okay, so if you remember, uh, we studied a variety of colligative properties, but three of those were the boiling point elevation of the solution, which was had this uh, expression. The change to the boiling point was equal to an embolioscopic constant multiplied by the molality of the solution. And then the freezing point depression, uh, where the change to the freezing point which is the cryoscopic constant multiplied by the molality of the solution. And finally, we also saw osmotic pressure, which was just the molar concentration of the solution multiplied by RT. All right, so uh, these equ equations need to be modified for electrolyte solution for the following reason. If you compare what happens when you put um, sodium chloride in solution compared to, say, glucose, the idea is that when you get electrolytes, the number of species present in solution is going to be larger than if you have the same concentration of an electrolyte. Okay, so if we take a, a solution that is maybe one molar in glucose uh, and one molar in sodium chloride, remember that uh, because sodium chloride dissociates, you're going to have that the solution will be one molar in sodium ions and one molar in chloride ions. Okay, so effectively, you have twice as many particles in solution for this uh, type of salt than you would for a non-electrolyte. The presence of that increased number of particles in solution will affect uh, the colligative properties because the colligative properties depend on how many species you have in solution, not, not on the type of species that you have in solution. Okay, so the question is, well, how do we modify these expressions to incorporate uh, that ability for electrolytes to generate more particles in solution. Well, so the idea is that we're actually going to uh, modify those expressions by multiplying them by a factor that takes into consideration that uh, increased presence of particles in solution, right? And that factor is simply going to be an I letter, which is called the Van Hoff factor. And we just simply have to uh, define what the Van Hoff factor is. Okay, so I, which is the Van Hoff factor, has the following definition. This is the number of particles that you have in solution. So let me write that. Number of particles in solution divided over the number of particles before solution. The number of particles before solution. All right, so uh, let's do this calculation of the Van Hoff factor for sodium chloride when put in water, assuming full dissociation. Okay, notice that um, uh, if sodium chloride fully dissociates, you're going to have two particles in solution for each one that you had before solution, right? So, so one unit of sodium chloride before solution generates two uh, particles, sodium plus and chloride. Okay, so this Van Hoff factor will be two for sodium chloride under full dissociation. And what that means is that a solution of, say, 0.1 molar concentration of sodium chloride is going to give you twice the boiling point of elevation, twice the freezing point depression, and twice as large an osmotic pressure as a solution of a non-electrolyte of the same concentration, say, 0.1 molar of glucose, would give you. Okay, so uh, this is kind of uh, uh, the important thing about these electrolyte solutions. Now, these problems can be a little bit complicated because sometimes electrolytes do not fully dissociate. Okay, so uh, suppose that we actually have, have a different salt, so no, not sodium chloride, 
uh, but a generic salt may be AB, or maybe we could actually have sodium chloride in a solvent that is not polar, uh, so that dissociation is not very good, maybe benzene or toluene and so forth. Okay, either one, or we can take here uh, maybe a generic substance AB, where you're going to generate some uh, ions A plus and B minus, but now we're going to be assuming that the dissociation is not complete. So it won't be the case that for every particle of AB that you have before solution, then there will be uh, two particles, one of A and one of B uh, in solution. Right? So the question is, how do we handle that? Well, that can be done uh, via the degree of dissociation. Okay, so the degree of dissociation, which we're going to call as alpha, is going to be or is defined as the Van Hoff factor minus one divided over nu minus one. Where nu here is just the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients of the ions in solution. Okay, so that would be the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients of the ions in solution. All right, so these uh, here you have a and the stoichiometric coefficient of 1 for A, 1 for B, so this new, which is the sum of those stoichiometric coefficients, will be 2. Okay? All right, so uh, let's then solve a little problem uh, to show you how uh, this degree of dissociation uh, uh, business works. All right, so we're going to calculate what the osmotic pressure would be for uh, salt AB that is only. Uh, uh, Fifty percent dissociated. This degree of dissociation then would be zero point five. Okay, that will be uh, our degree of dissociation. So the salt is only half percent or uh, fifty percent dissolved. And then uh, the molar concentration of that salt that you're going to have, this AB, will be zero point zero uh, one hundred molar. And then the question is, well, what would be the osmotic pressure that this type of electrolyte solution? gives rise to. All right, so we come to this expression and say, well, uh, uh, the temperature is going to be 298 Kelvin, so we don't have a problem with that. Uh, we know what the R is, we know what the molar concentration is. The only thing that we need to know is what this Van Hoff factor is. Well, uh, because we know that the ha uh, salt is half dissociated, this degree of dissociation is 0.5, we know that this nu is 2, so the only thing that we have to do is solve that expression for I which will be your Van Hoff factor. Okay, so if you solve this expression for I with uh, those numbers, so 50% degree of dissociation or 0.5 uh, uh, fraction of dissociation, uh, and then nu, which is the sum of the stoichiometric coefficients being two, then you find that this I, this Van Hoff factor is 1.50. Okay, so from that expression, uh, we find that uh, that will be 1.50 multiplied by the molar concentration here we have to use S a unit, so uh, notice that that is going to be 10.0, uh, 10 to the, uh, or, or uh, mole per cubic meter. Okay, so it's molarity, which is mole per liter, multiplied by 1,000, uh, which is a transformation of liter to, uh, to cubic meter, the S a unit. And then R, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, and then the temperature of 298 Kelvin. Okay, this uh, osmotic pressure uh, is then uh, uh, going to be equal to uh, 4.96. 96. Then to the 4 Pascal. Okay, and the important thing here is that if you were to do the calculation with a, a solution of a non-electrolyte, what you would actually find out is that uh, the osmotic pressure that you would get with a non-electrolyte, which would be exactly the same one, but then the degree of this or, or this Van Hoff factor will be just one because uh, non-electrolytes do not dissociate. Then what you find out is that the osmotic pressure of that non-electrolyte solution would be 50% smaller than what we get right here with this uh, electrolyte solution. That even though that's not fully dissociated, only uh, half of it is dissociated. Overall you're going to have uh, more particles in this uh, half-dissociated uh, electrolyte solution than in the non-electrolyte solution. Okay, so uh, to wrap up this video, we just have uh, defined what an electrolyte solution is, and we have laid the foundation to calculate colligative properties of those electrolyte solutions.